Like to me, it's something I like if I were laying in bed, I'm like, crap, there's so many unread messages and so many unread comments. But yeah, I mean, it's an interesting topic because I think there's two sides to it. I think the one side is that trying to keep that engagement and letting people know that you're there and, and that once makes them want to engage more. The other side of it is that you can, if you're an artist and you do a tour and you only do 10 cities, how much more valuable is a ticket to those 10 cities than when you do 100 cities, you know? So if I'm on commenting and responding to people all the time, they're kind of like, oh, cool, he responded to me. But if I only once a month post on my story, hey, guys, tomorrow I'm going to read comments, 10,000 comments the next day, you know? So it's, it's good to engage, but it's also to create that level of like, you know, Rihanna's not responding to her comments. You know what I mean? You can't get a comment back from Kim Kardashian. It's not going to happen. And that elevates their status more and more. So I think it's good to engage, good to give value, but also good to sometimes let them be like, I really want this. I really want this. And then when you do finally engage with them, it's a bigger payoff and they're, they're really excited about it, you know? What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Bread Winner Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Tyler Harris, and today is obviously a little bit different. Number one, because we are live here in, where are we in right now? Is this uh, West, Hollywood? West Hollywood? West Hollywood. And uh, for those that are listening to this podcast right now, I apologize, but there's a beautiful view behind us. We're sitting around a pool and I've got three incredible guests. And what I'm going to do is have them come on uh, to start this thing off and just tell a little bit about them. And uh, then we're going to talk about a bunch of different things. We'll kind of circle around the branding, social media, marketing world uh, that we all live in, uh, whether we like it or not. And uh, I want to start off by saying social media is an incredible tool. It's just whether you're using it correctly correctly because there's no reason why a guy from Greenville, South Carolina would be sitting here with these people, if not for a tool called social media. And so you can say it's a distraction. I say it's for connection and uh, we're going to do that today. So let's start with you, Matt, Stefanina, tell everybody uh, a little bit about you. Um, that's a great intro. I'm, I'm from Virginia, small town uh, as well. I started uh, dancing when I was 18. I, I dropped out of school. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I knew it wasn't that path. And I uh, started flipping houses. I started DJing. Uh, I was a personal trainer for a while. I taught snowboarding. I tried everything under the sun and eventually I just moved to LA and um, started a YouTube channel mostly making dance and, and music videos. And uh, I have the largest dance channel in the world now, over 2 billion views and 10 million subscribers. And 2 billion with a B. 2 billion with a B, yeah. Uh, 2 billion views, it's crazy. Um, but the, the real thing that I, I mostly try to do on social media now is uh, one, teach, whether it's dance or kind of what we're talking about today, how to help people build their businesses, whatever it is that they do. And then also just use it as an artistic outlet and make music on there. With do comedy sketches uh it's like a big playground really awesome what about you Brittany? cool my name is Brittany michael chuck i do marketing and branding for influencers entrepreneurs thought leaders and coaches so i really help them grow their business online and i help them with their conversion strategy because we live in a world where there's so much potential to grow a successful online business as long as you have the eyeballs you're speaking to your target demographic you're breathing life into them and then you're also adding value as well as conversion at the end so i really bring them through that process of the funnel of how to get their clients put them through and be able to close them and, and grow their business. So I love all the marketing, branding, social media growth, copywriting, and just anything to do with growing your personal brand online is definitely something that I'm passionate about. And uh, I love helping my clients and seeing them succeed. Awesome. And for the educated, we have James Swanwick. No, Swanick. For the uneducated, we have James Swanwick. There you go. Got it. So tell us a little bit about you, James. Yeah, so I'm Australian-American, and I guess you could say I'm a healthpreneur in that I have health businesses. I help people sleep better. Uh, our main product uh, is a pair of these Swannies blue light blocking glasses that I'm wearing on my face right now. 
and these glasses block the artificial blue light from a cell phone, TV screen, bathroom light, kitchen light that disrupts your, your sleep quality. Uh, and then I also help business owners, entrepreneurs, professionals quit drinking. I haven't drunk in or since 2010. Uh, I wasn't an alcoholic. I was just, you know, a societally acceptable drinker and that I had a couple of drinks each night, a few more on weekends. But I realized that it was slowing me down. So I just quit for what I thought would be 30 days. And then it ended up being nine years and counting. And then since then, uh, I created a program called 30 Day No Alcohol Challenge, which has helped tens of thousands of people now quit drinking for at least 30 days. Uh, and then um, thousands of people quit drinking and stay quit. That's incredible. So we'll dig into a little bit of all of that, but let's start off the conversation, uh, maybe in a fun way. How about this? Um, we'll start with you, Matt. Looking at social media. So just right now, if you were just sitting on your couch and you were going to open up your phone, like what's the thing that you enjoy the most right now on social media, um, as far as what platform and what element within that platform? As far as a viewer, or for me as from, a creator, from me as a viewer, as a viewer, oh man, I let's I, do both. Let's do viewer and creator. That's yeah, I think as a viewer, um, f for me, like you say, social media a lot of times can be a distraction. So I, you know, I follow a lot of my industry friends and things like that. But I mostly try to find pages that that get me thinking creatively. Um, I follow everything from comedians to parkour people to really amazing dance pages, um, you know, people that talk about investing and marketing strategies. So mostly when I'm going on there, it's a mix of entertainment, but also a lot of value added um, to my life and, and to my business so that I'm not just getting distracted and caught up on there. I think for me as a creator, um, I, I really do like Instagram a lot. Uh, most of my following is, is on YouTube, but the thing about Instagram is that it, you can put out really short content and really experiment a lot more. Sure. YouTube is a longer format, a lot more goes into planning and, and editing and all those types of things. Whereas Instagram, you'd be like, let's try a freestyle rap video. Here's a beat, go, you know, put it up and see what happens. Yeah. So it's really experimental, um, which I think leads to a lot more successes than whereas, you know, some of the other platforms have played a little safer and kind of follow the patterns. It makes a lot of sense. What about you, Brittany? Um, what was the question? So when you go to social media now, both as a viewer or consumer and as a creator, what are the things that you're most interested in or you're most, most excited about? That's a great question. I am excited about trends. I think that we live in a world where there's so much potential on social media if you know how to capitalize on it correctly. And again, the biggest thing is the conversion. So I love studying people that are super successful, um, the biggest players in this space. What content are they creating? How are they saying it? What photos and videos are they pumping out? And then also the copy. Like I feel like social media has two big things things to it, it's the visuals, so the photo or video that you post on your wall is kind of to uh, attract your target demographic and then the copy, so what you write in the body of it is how you engage your target demographic. So those are kind of the two things that I really focus on studying and I look at the best and I see what they're doing and I try it out on my own brand and I love then teaching my clients what works and what doesn't work. What's an example, not to put you on the spot, but what's an example right now of something that you see uh, trending as far as uh, the type of content that's like really popping right now or really yeah. getting a lot of engagement? Videos. So yeah. back in the day, videos weren't as popular and now video content, the engagement is also being ranked better. So videos are getting a lot of um, popularity online and it creates the opportunity for your target demographic to know, like, and trust you. Because a photo, you can post it, and it could be somebody in a third world country that's managing your social media account, but when you're a personal brand and you're making a video, you're expressing yourself, you're essentially taking down the mask and letting people get to know you, and it's not so static like just a photo. Um, it's just really engaging for people, and uh, it adds a lot of value to be able to be good at creating videos online these days. Absolutely. What about you, James? Yeah, I like to watch uh, social media experts and what they're doing from a business sense because I have two businesses that you know heavily relies on social media. So I like to follow Ty Lopez. Ty Lopez actually mentored me about five years ago, and I consider him to be one of the top guys on social media. So I'm watching for the for what he says in the videos, the camera work, uh, the call to action, the captions, whether he's posting 
funny things versus uh, educational things versus personal things. So I like to study that for my own businesses. Um, I actually went down a rabbit hole a, a year or so ago where I suffered from comparison analysis where I was, sure. I, I was studying too many, I was looking at other people's social media pages the whole time and I was like, man, my life kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> right? But it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, but it doesn't. My life's awesome. But, but I, you know, even me thinking that I'm so well put together, I went down a rabbit hole for a while where I was like comparing myself to other people. And so I've gone through phases where I just say, I am done with social media. And then I come back and go, actually, no, I'm not done with social media. It's an integral part of my business. Sure. And I like to learn. I like to be educated. And then sometimes I go, I'm done with social media again. So I kind of go back and forth. I so are you now doing 30-day social media uh, <laughs> yeah. detoxes as well? <laughs> it's, more, it's more a digital detox, yeah, I think. Sure. So uh, what you said at the beginning was so true. Like social media is awesome for business and, and it, it's fantastic. But I've also found where my edge is because um, – as strong as I think I am, I get to a point where I am comparing myself to other people and I, I don't like that about my personality and it does reduce my, my happiness level. Have you found though that the more you're creating, the less you're consuming? Um, let me think about that for a second. No, I think the more I'm creating, the more I'm looking at what engagement my creation gets. So I am, I am still, I haven't got to the point yet where I'm just creating and letting it go. I am creating and then I'm monitoring like, how many comments is that getting? How many views? What are people resonating with? And I think that's a fantastic thing because it shows you what your audience is receptive to. And I've created programs and products based purely on how people are reacting. Um, but I also don't like the fact that I'm posting and I'm monitoring how many comments and views it gets because if it doesn't do well, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes I'm like, feel a little bit deflated by that. Sure. And then so I think the challenge for a lot of people, I can only really speak for myself, is um, finding that right balance between pumping out as much social media, knowing that it's doing good in the world, as long as you're doing informative, educational type posts, but also withdrawing from it when necessary so you can just take a digital detox. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. And... I think we've probably all experienced that that moment when you you've created whether a video or a post, whatever it is, like you're like, this is freaking perfect. Like this is going to just crush and you post it and it just bombs. And then something that like literally like and midnight, you just throw it together real quick and throw it on there and just just goes crazy. It's just the most frustrating thing uh, ever. Uh, but you're right. Like you can go crazy looking at all these numbers and, and well, why did this, why didn't they like this? Or why, why did they like that? Uh, but for me, you know, what the thing I'm most excited about, I love Instagram stories. You know, that's, that's like, I think people are scrolling right to left, not up and down anymore um, because it really gives you, more of an inside look at that person. Like I remember when stories first came out and you had those big like motivational pages and all of a sudden they popped up and you saw like the person behind it and you were like, Oh, it's, that's the motivating guy. Oh, got it. And then all of a sudden they kind of like disappeared because it was like finally like behind the curtain. Uh, and I think to me, like if you're properly using Instagram stories, like a vlog, man, you can show your followers and show your audience this like unparalleled um, access to your life where they really get to know you. Uh, I did an interesting experiment the other day. I was on, I do a lot of live content. Uh, that's where I started on Facebook with Facebook Live because at the time Instagram didn't have it. Um, but I just wanted it to be super authentic and you can only fake it when you're live for so long. And I wanted people to really get to know me. And so I was on this Instagram, Facebook Live. I usually do a QA and a three or four days a week. And we were talking about followers and really getting people to know you. And someone asked, they said, well, I got, you know, 1700 followers. You're saying I need to know everything about all 1700 people. I was like, no, 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 no. I'm saying they need to know you. I'm like, let's do a quick experiment here. If you are on here right now and you feel like you genuinely like really know me, like really, really know who Tyler Jack Harris is, just comment. I know you. And all of a sudden I know you, I know you, I know you, I know you. I'm like, awesome. Cool. Let, let's play this out. All right. So. Cindy. I know Cindy lives in Florida. I know she really likes when I post about my kids because she always comments on my kids posts or my, my child's pick. That's pretty much all I know about Cindy. But Cindy just said she knows me. I'm like, all right, we got Tim. Tim lives in Kansas. I know Tim likes the weather because every time there's some weird weather pattern headed towards South Carolina, he like sends me a link. That's literally all I know about Tim. But Tim just said he knows me. So for me, it's the coolest experience to be able to use this tool to allow thousands and millions of people 
to literally know you on a level to where they like you, they trust you, they're willing to tell their friends about you. And then ultimately when you have something to provide them like a service or a product, of course they're gonna buy from you. Of course they're gonna um, subscribe. Of course they're gonna share. Of course they're gonna do these things when they actually feel like they know you as a, as a human being. So that's the kind of the thing that I'm most uh, excited about. Um, within y'all's worlds, what has been the biggest struggle uh, with social media? Let's start with you, James. Well, my biggest struggle with social media has been that comparison and analysis okay. and uh, spending too much time on social media. Um, I've now set up rules around my use of my phone. So in the morning, I don't wake up uh, to an alarm in my phone anymore. I actually bought a $7 alarm clock. So then when the alarm goes off, I hit the alarm. And because I'm hitting the alarm, I'm not putting my hand on my phone. And then I've set a rule that um, my phone, my hand is not allowed to touch my phone until I've written 20 things that I'm grateful for every day. So I call it the daily 20. And doing that gets me in a very positive, energetic mindset for the rest of the day. And only then do I then go onto my, onto my phone. Um, I find when I go onto my phone, I'm scrolling through social media. For the most part, I'm in reactionary mode. And so I'm, sometimes I go down a, down a rabbit hole. Now, I don't want to paint it completely negative picture on this right because I love social media and I and, and I do do amazing educational informative content I feel which helps a lot of people um, but I I definitely put parameters around when I'm going to use it sometimes I break it but when I but for the most part when I'm when I'm using it I'm always thinking right how can I be informative and educational how can I not be vain and saying I'm so cool this is what I'm doing how can I make my stories and my page help people specifically in relation to how can I help them reduce or quit drinking and how can I help people sleep better because I have a sleep company. Um, a great friend of mine, a guy called Max Lugavere, he wrote a, a New York Times best-selling book called Genius Foods. I think he has the best Instagram page that I've ever seen in terms of educational content around health and so I love studying his page because every single post is here's what to eat, here's what you shouldn't eat. Here's why you should eat this. Here's why you shouldn't. So I'm loving at the moment super educational Instagram pages versus here's me in a bikini or here's me, you know, with my shirt off on the beach or here's me lifting a record for the for the day. Sure. Yeah. That's awesome. What, what about uh, you, Brittany? What's that? What's a struggle? Man, I am all about the positive aspects of social media so I don't know if 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 a struggle comes to mind I think um, one thing that I constantly pay a lot of conscious attention to is what content does my target demographic want because you can be creating content and it can be the best content in the world and unless it really lands on your target demographic you're not going to get engagement you're not going to get to move people and I think that's a lot of our goal on social media is to move people to educate them to entertain them to make them feel something to inspire them and so what I constantly focus on is how do I best and I think this is important for everyone is how do I best and most effectively communicate what I'm trying to communicate to be able to elect the response that I want in my target demographics. So that's what I spend a lot of my time doing is, is testing and even like asking people. You can ask people on your Instagram stories, what type of content do you want? Like I'm the biggest health nut ever. And I love cooking, so I'd always post stories of me cooking. And then I asked people one day, I'm like, hey, do you want, I did a, a poll where they can vote yes or no. It's like, hey guys, do you want me to post more of my cooking? And like 80% of people were like, no, we don't <laughs> care awesome. about your cooking. So I, 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 I asked my target demographic what they wanted to see. And then I was like, do you guys want more motivational posts? Do you guys want more um, marketing and branding? And so I really feeled out um, what is it that my target demographic liked. And then I asked them, do you guys want more photos? you want more video so I think that's my constant focal point is how do I create the highest quality content for my target demographic that is going to move them and affect them the greatest that's that's great and I love the fact that you have an audience that was willing to engage and tell you because a lot of times yeah I've, I've put stuff out there like that before and and like it may have been 80 20 but it was like of a you know a census of 13 people <laughs> you know, versus like 13,000 people but it's nice to be able to have a engaging group of people that are really telling you yeah. you know what you not necessarily want to hear but what, what they actually believe 
And I think one of the important things about that is to really show your audience that you care about them and, and, and show that you appreciate them. Because I think of it like if you were at the mall and somebody came up to you and they're like, Tyler, I like your jacket. Would you just like turn away and walk away? Probably not. You, you probably would interact with them. And I think that's the same on social media is people want to interact with you. And when it's just a one way street and they're commenting on your stuff and you're never commenting back, when you're never showing appreciation for them, they can kind of lose interest and they'll fall off. And so I think it's so important to always be engaging your target demographic, telling them that you appreciate them and just giving them a little bit of love and um, doing things like giveaways and uh, just asking them the, what they want and, and being able to show that you appreciate their attention because we live in a world where there's so much distraction where when they're giving you their attention, it's such a valuable commodity that, I mean, again, show show your appreciation and let them know that you um, care about them, essentially. Yeah. It's so true because people, especially now because there's so much of it, you, you forget how incredible it is for literally someone to be just like pulling up their phone, scrolling, stop, take the time to watch a video yeah. of you, and then like to go as to far as to actually like it, actually comment, no less actually share it with like all of their yeah. Facebook friends or Instagram. Like that's, that's, a, that's a lot to ask. That's a lot to ask from currency. somebody. Yeah, it's, it's huge. It's absolutely and, huge. And, and they're working for you. They're like your affiliate yeah. marketing team. Yeah, Show yeah. them some love, you guys. Yeah, like They're sharing your content. They're doing the work for you. Instead of you paying Facebook, you're having an army and a team of sharing your content as long as you're adding value. Like show them appreciation. I, I, I just think it's, I just think it's selfish when people take advantage of the fact that you have people's attention. I like the fact that you, you're asking them what they want, you're going and getting it, and then you're giving it to them. It's so simple. What a great formula. <laughs> Ask them what they want, go and get it, give it to them. And then the other Relationship thing Relationship Advice 101. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the other thing is uh, always respond to people's comments. It's like it pains me to see people's pages where they have all these comments from someone's the post and then there's no responses to that. Yeah. And I, I've hacked that system a little bit where I'll, I'll, I'll do it all at once. So rather than checking it 20 times a day and responding, I'll say from 5 until 5.15 in the afternoon, I'm going to go through and, and look at them and then respond and respond that way. And that way, I'm not constantly going in and out of the phone all day. And I'm also giving it my undivided focused attention. Mm -hmm. That's good. And I want to come back to that. So let's make sure we come back to that. But let's uh, get to you, Matt. What's with social media? What's one aspect of it that maybe is a pain point for you? Yeah, I think for me, probably the biggest challenge is the balance of like quality versus quantity. Um, I've been on YouTube over 10 years now, probably like you said earlier, made thousands of yeah. pieces of content. And, you know, in the in dance, it's like, OK, cool, I did a, a piece of choreography. Now, how am I going to do the next thousand pieces of choreography different than that one so that somebody wants to keep watching? And I, I think it applies to any field. It doesn't matter what you're doing, but balancing your time in creating content and also spending time training and working on the next thing so that when, whether it's competitors that catch up to you or it's just that people start to get used to your content, get a little bored with it, you're already prepared on the next level, the next thing that you're gonna drop to bring them back in and make them be like, oh man, compared to last year, he's even better. He released this new thing. Um, so I'm always trying to, to make sure while I'm creating that I'm still working on some things behind the scenes to keep people's attention and keep them guessing for what's next. What is it about dancing that just to me automatically elicits like a response from people? Like it's a, it's the lack of a language barrier. That's 99% that's <laughs> of the, the reason that, you know, I, I used to put out music and I do comedy and all these things and my dance videos outperform 10 to one every other piece of content. And it's because you have fans in India, in sure. the Philippines, all through Europe, Asia, South America, everybody watches a dance video exactly the same, gets the same enjoyment from it if they can understand the language the or not. The captions need you know? Yeah. Can I add something? Yeah. I think that um, social media has become a platform 
as an escape. So I think instead of going to the doctor's office and reading the newspaper, instead of um, going in the um, taxi and uh, do, fixing something, they're going on social media for an escape. And you, I love your dance videos. They're absolutely amazing. And I think the reason why you've been able to what grow your social media 3.3 million followers is because it's so entertaining. Um, obviously, the skill is absolutely amazing. And just the type of content that you're creating is such an escape from boredom and you do such a good job at comprising these videos the topic itself is just absolutely amazing it's it's allowing people um, an opportunity to be entertained which is is why they go on social media I feel entertained or educated and you've mastered the entertainment component so did you guys happen to see this video I think they titled it like the dancing dentist that went viral it was a dentist that did the uh, what was the yeah, Drake Tatiana in my, no, it was the Drake oh, in my, feelings. so in my feelings, he did in my feelings and he danced to it. Did you guys see this? I think so. Yeah, I so, so he's from my town, a small town in Greenville, South Carolina. He was on my pot. He's, I work out with him. He's a good friend of mine. So this guy literally, he's the shyest, most introverted, incredible guy, but he's very shy. Shy enough to where he told everybody they had to leave to record this video. He's like, I'm not, I'm not going to do this dance like with anybody around. So like everybody has to leave the office. He owns a dental office in our, like two miles from my house. So he does this video and, and they put it online. They put it a couple different places. And all of a sudden this thing just like caught fire. I think right now it's up to like 200 million views, something like that. He was on Good Morning America, the Steve Harvey show. So the, in the comments, he's a good looking dude. He's a big guy, um, little dimples, kind of like your all American guy kind of look. The comments from women were just incredible. I remember one comment that I read. It said, I've been staring at this video for 30 minutes trying to see if he has a ring on his finger. And then I realized, crap, I'm married. <laughs> it was like the best comment ever. But like he's used that like moment of fame like he was on Steve Harvey good morning all these different um, platforms to launch a nonprofit called dr. C smiles they're like raising money for cancer all this stuff but again like to me it was like this aspect of the fact that it, he took a guy that would normally would norm normally be dancing all of a sudden he puts out tons of videos he puts out a video dancing and it just goes freaking crazy the funny thing about the story though is, and I was doing a podcast with him the other day and we got done with the podcast and we were just sitting there talking. He's like, man, he's like, I've really been struggling lately. And, uh, he's like, I'm just not really sure like what I want to do. I'm like, what's, you know, what's going on? He's like, man, I, um, I really hate dancing. <laughs> and I was like, what? He's like, like, I really don't like it. And he was being like dead serious. I'm like, that sucks because like now like he posts the, every new dance that comes out he does these videos and they make them do it because they know that's what gets all the engagement he's like but dude like i really hate it <laughs> it was just like the funniest like realization of like the fact that you you're exact like your answer was freaking spot on like there's no language to it it's just why especially someone when you can tell it's out of their comfort zone yeah. like if i were to get up right now and dance like it would be so uncomfortable. It would be would absolutely it, horrible, which would make it that much better. Yeah. Um, so I, I love it. I love it. I want to get back uh, to something you said, which was about responding to comments. I agree 100%. Like if you have the audacity to grow a brand, if you have the audacity to want to have tons of followers and tons of reach and all this stuff, but you're not willing to reply to comments, it's, it's the most ridiculous thing ever to me. But sometimes it can get overwhelming. Like sometimes I find it's like, I'm laying in bed like one, two in the morning, just like replying to comments. Like I just started this 30 day Facebook video challenge. Uh, we're day 16 right now where I post a Facebook post every day that has the topic and they have to do a two minute video and they post in the comments. There's like 200 videos a day that are, been not, that are getting put on there. And in the beginning I said, yeah, and I'm going to watch everyone and reply. And all of a sudden I realized like it took me three hours the first day. Like legit, like three legit straight hours of watching videos and replying thoughtfully, like, like, oh, I love how you said this. And so where, like, where do you draw the line? Like, obviously intent is everything, but I hate when I see notifications come through that maybe are on, especially old posts where, you know, like if you didn't see it within that window of time to see that notification, it's gone. Like I'll never be able to dig that back up. So like, where do we draw the line in like wanting to do the right thing and wanting to respond and just there only being a certain number of hours in a day? What do you think? I just think you do what you can. Yeah. And 
and then you just, you you leave the rest. I mean, otherwise you're going to spend eight hours a day doing yeah. it, right? Yeah. And I think also it's you got to create context. So when you are posting, you tell people, say, listen, I read almost every comment and I reply to most, or I reply to many. I just literally cannot reply to all of them. So I think creating that context, people understand that. That's fair. So I think it's just as simple as that, just announcing, look, I'm, I read almost every comment and I reply to as many as I can. Mm -hmm. And I think you probably have the worst problem with this, I would imagine. Yeah, I don't even want to know. <laughs> because the quantity of comments <laughs> that you're getting, I mean, is it something that you're, is it something that like, that you think about? Like, is it something that, like to me, it's something I, like if I were laying in bed, I'm like, crap, there's so many unread messages and so many unread comments, but. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting topic because I think there's two sides to it. I think the one side is that trying to keep that engagement and letting people know that you're there and, and that once makes them want to engage more. The other side of it is that you can, if you're an artist and you do a tour and you only do 10 cities, how much more valuable is a ticket to those 10 cities than when you do 100 cities, you know? So if I'm on commenting and responding to people all the time, they're kind of like, oh, cool, he responded to me. But if I only once a month post on my story, hey guys, tomorrow I'm gonna read comments, yeah. 10,000 comments the next day, you know? So it's, it, it's good to engage, but it's also to create that level of like, you know, Rihanna's not responding to her comments. You know what I mean? You can't get a comment back from Kim Kardashian. It's not gonna happen. And that elevates their status more and more. So I think it's good to engage, good to give value, but also good to sometimes let them be like, I really want this, I really want this. And then when you do finally engage with them, it's a bigger payoff and they're they're really excited about it, you know? Yeah. That's that's a that's a great answer because you're right. When they do, then all of a sudden it's a big freaking deal, and and even you know at, at my scale, if I have you know 25, 50 comments on a post, doing a pound emoji on all 50 versus being real thoughtful in 10, it's it's there's no comparison um, because the people are going to see the others and they're going to want that, so they're going to keep commenting, so they get that exactly. super thoughtful comment on theirs one day. Yeah, that yeah. makes a lot of sense. Um, where should we go with this next? I'm curious, what um, has been the one thing that you've done in your business or brand that has allowed you to create the most amount of success? Do you want to start, Matt? Yeah, I mean, I know mine right away is um, dropping my ego a little bit and doing videos that are not meant for other professional dancers. Doing videos that are meant for people that just love dance. You know what I mean? Like I think when I started my YouTube channel, I was always thinking, how can I make the best dance choreography, the hardest thing with the best dancers and the best lighting and everything was about like pushing the envelope. And then I was noticing that I would film like a beginner class with some of my like teenage students and we would mess up and, but everybody just had a good time. And it was filmed on like a cell phone, terrible quality. And that video would do 10 times what my professional lighted, you know, on a 4K camera did. And I was like, why is it exactly like you're saying and thinking about why something is working and it's working because people watch that and it makes them feel good. It makes them feel like, oh, maybe I could do that one day or that reminds me of my cousin. There's a relatability factor that you don't have when something is so perfect, you know. So I, I try to do a mix, like a lot of my content now is just literally filming my class and it's one take, there's no redos. We filmed one in LA last night. 150 dancers, everybody takes a couple turns, like, and, and I post the best five or 10 dancers online, and that's it, you know, and, and you're looking at the best dancers in the world and what they learned in one hour, and, and people come from all over the world to be in that room and to experience what that's like, you know, and it, it's not the same way when you have something that you edited and you mm -hmm. filmed a bunch of well, times. It's real. It's real. People you know? crave that realness. Yeah. And I think that, like you said, it's that relatability. They see you and uh, they look up to you and they admire you. And to show that real side of you, uh, it gives them hope that they can one day be like that too. Yeah. I think um, being vulnerable in my videos or in my posts has been a huge uh, win, I guess, in terms of creating connection with the audience. So when I was first on social media, I was very conscious about putting nice polished photos up and like, 
showing how li how cool my life was. And then as soon as I started getting vulnerable and saying things like, hey, I'm not feeling very comfortable about this at the moment, or I messed up here, it was like, 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 comment, 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 comment. And so um, it's been, you know, it was challenging to start that process, but now it's almost like I've become not addicted to it, but it feels a lot easier now to just get real. And, yeah. and by getting real, I mean really getting real, like being vulnerable. I, I, I used to cover up my hair loss for many years. I used to put stuff in my hair that made, created the illusion that I had more hair than I actually did. And then I shaved it off. And then I did a post about shaving it off and about all my insecurities around it. And, uh, and it was like my most uh, liked and most commented post ever. And people were all like supporting, 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 supporting. And um, some of the comments I got was like, oh, I just like you 10 times more now. Mm. I was like, really? I was like, that's crazy. So I think getting vulnerable and um, for me that's being in integrity and people can, can sense that. I'm so glad the conversation went there. It's exactly what I was thinking. It was, was vulnerability. And, and um, I've read a lot of Brene Brown, so big on vulnerability. She's incredible. Um, and, and the interesting thing with her, she talks about, you know, got a crowd in front of you say, hey, how many of you see vulnerability to be as weakness? And everyone raises their hand. Well, if somebody were to come on stage and be vulnerable, how many of you would see that as courageous? And everyone raises their hand. And so it's a, it's a funny kind of dynamic between this idea of vulnerability and transparency on social media. Because I think we would all agree and, and the majority of people would agree that the one thing social media needs more of is transparency. But transparency is an interesting thing because everybody wants more transparency until it comes time to be more transparent. Like everyone's like, that guy needs to be more transparent. Hey, what'd you do last night? Whoa. Like, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about they need to be more transparent. And so I think there's, a, it seems as though there's a little bit of a movement starting uh, to create more of it. Um, whether it's certain books and, and influencers that are putting more vulnerable content out there. Uh, but it's definitely needed because that's what's giving social media a bad name is seeing all the filtered, just highlight reels and, and needing more people that are out there putting, you know, real content, um, and that are being vulnerable, that are giving, you know, the good, bad and ugly of whatever it is, whatever their industry is, uh, for themselves. Um, but I think, you know, to answer your question, kind of come full circle on, on that question, the biggest thing that's helped with my business, I love the fact that I can sit here and talk to you guys about social media when I sell life insurance like makes no sense whatsoever. Um, it's the most boring occupation probably that exists, but I still build my, but I still build a personal brand that doesn't talk about life insurance. It talks about the key pillars of success and what it means to work hard and, and the transparency of like when I have a bad day and, and what happened and how do I pick myself up and just these key pillars of, of success that don't necessarily have to do with success in insurance, it's just success in life in general. But whether it's insurance or whether it's real estate or there's some people that are going to be listening to this, whatever profession that they're in, the biggest key to the success with our business is getting insanely narrow on our niche and our market. It's like as, in, as narrow as you can get and then go like three, four, five layers deeper and then creating all of your systems, all of your scripts, all of everything that you do around serving that one person, like you create an avatar of this one person and surround everything to where you know that group of people better than they know themselves. Uh, that's what we've done with our business. Uh, and it's, it's enabled us to go from where everybody is, is trying to be all things to all people end up being nothing to no one, kind of the jack of all trades, master of none to where you can just go laser focus on this one group. And to me, what it is ultimately is it's the ultimate form of respect. It's the ultimate form of respect to someone that if they speak Spanish, I'm not speaking German to them. I'm speaking Spanish. And there's no like hidden agenda with that or anything. It's just getting them to be able to make a buying decision quicker and, and easiest uh, because of the fact that you're speaking their language. Uh, to me, it's just, it's, it means everything in our business. It's the 100% the reason for our success. I completely agree with you. I think that um, knowing your target demographics pain points when you are establishing yourself as a thought leader, as a coach and growing your personal brand online is one of the most important things to do because if you can't um, comprehend what they're dealing with and then 
be the solution to their problem, they're not going to trust you. And if they're not going to trust you, they're not going to, um, they're not going to want to buy from you. They're not going to want to watch you. They're not going to want to give you their attention. And so I think that really understanding your target demographic, really understanding what are their struggles, what are their strengths, what, what really lands on them is the most important thing to growing your brand. Cause that's how you're going to get people emotionally invested. That's how you're going to get people that would um, go to bat for you. And that's how you build a cult-like following, which is, I think, what everyone kind of aims to do these days on social media is not just build a brand, but build a cult-like yes. following. I'm sorry, I apologize. It's private property it, and it wasn't authorized. Is this, yeah, is this little meeting here authorized with our department because we're not allowed to have I'm that? just a guest at the hotel, and I just had some friends come over to record. Welcome to the director of PR, yes. If you guys can please leave. Gotcha. So we should we do something at the end that says just so you guys know we're not at the gym. No, <laughs> we haven't mentioned where no, we are. All, the, where all we they are. can literally see is here. I got you. Can I can I, can I just close it? Can I just close it? It'll take like thirty seconds to say like, hey guys, thanks. So you know the thing is, guys, is just that Understand. part of the security. No, the, yeah, so sorry. we're, we're not respect. allowed this. It's gotcha. authorized. So literally, have a contract just, saying that it's authorized. Just say, just, gotcha. just, just close it. That's it. So, so basically to close, so guys, we appreciate you joining us on the Breadwinner Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris, and we'll see you next time.